Domestic and foreign banks manipulated the rand's value is part of the private sector's effort to destabilize government. I'm going to explain South Africa's rand manipulation saga in six minutes. They have admitted basically uh, to manipulating the RAN. Yeah. Uh, the bigger story around currency manipulation, they've been fined over 40 million RAND by the Competition Commission, which is not a lot actually. Santu is angry that domestic and foreign banks at once those involved charged and prosecuted manipulated the RAND value between 2007 and 2018. In 2013, authorities in the US and UK uncovered evidence of collusion among traders from major international banks to manipulate currencies, including the RAND. Traders from various banks exchanged information in chat rooms hosted on the Bloomberg Market Information Platform using names like Tsar. This manipulation benefited the banks but harmed their clients by affecting currency levels. Leveraging information from the UK and US investigations, the Competition Commission filed charges of forex collusion against international banks such as Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, BNP Paribas, JP Morgan Chase, and Citibank in 2015. The Commission also implicated local banks such as Standard Bank, Investec, ABSA, alleging that evidence indicated their traders participated in the chatroom schemes. By 2020, the Commission had expanded its list to include First Rand, Nedbank and others, totaling 28 banks under investigation. The Competition Commission estimated the value of the manipulated foreign exchange trades by the banks at one trillion. According to the Treasury, the purported actions of currency traders from the 28 implicated banks could have impacted individual clients of the banks directly. Consequently, these clients, rather than the country and its economy, would have borne the brunt of minor fluctuations in the exchange rate. Following this, several traders and banks, such as Standard Chartered, Barclays and Citigroup, admitted guilt to charges. Standard Chartered Bank agreed to 42.7 million settlement for manipulating the RAND by coordinating bids, offers and trades with other banks from 2007 to 2018. In 2017, Citibank settled with the Competition Commission for similar charges, paying 69.5 million, while 26 other banks faced the Competition Tribunal. Some banks, including HSBC, Credit Suisse, BNP and JP Morgan, contended that the Commission's allegations were vague and lacked specific facts. These international banks also argued that the local watchdog lacked jurisdiction over them since the RAND trading occurred offshore. South Africa's commercial banks vigorously defended themselves against accusations of currency manipulation and market collusion, asserting that the Competition Commission's eight-year case lacks evidence against them. In an opinion piece, Standard Bank CEO Sim Chabalala refuted allegations of RAND manipulation or involvement in any anti-competitive or criminal activities levelled against the bank by the Commission. Similarly, Ned Bank, another bank facing charges, denied any involvement in anti-competitive behaviour and challenged the Competition Commission's failure to present evidence supporting allegations of currency manipulation. The South African Treasury stated that the alleged wrongdoing of banks would not have affected the declining trend of the currency since 2013, which is primarily influenced by broader shifts in the global and domestic economy. It also emphasised that the current value of the currency, depreciating against the dollar, and its subsequent impact on prices should not be linked to instances of misconduct between 2007 and 2013. Meanwhile, the South African Reserve Bank, tasked with safeguarding the value of the RAND, has refrained from intervening in the currency manipulation issue. The central bank's governor has asserted that the Competitions Commission holds the authority to investigate the purported misconduct of banks. Many local banks continue to argue that there is no evidence of their involvement in the chat rooms 
and dismissed the idea of all 28 banks colluding in a single conspiracy as implausible. They also claim that the complaints against them were poorly formulated and were filed too long after the trading occurred. However, their attempts to have the case dismissed by the competition tribunal were unsuccessful. Subsequently, the bank sought recourse with the Competition Appeal Court, where hearings are being overseen by Judge Dennis Davis. Should the court rule against the banks and the Competition Commission ultimately prevails, the banks could be subject to fines equivalent to 10% of their turnover, potentially totaling billions of rands. A crucial ruling is expected this year.